You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is Electric Power Revisited, and we want to know what are the mathematical equations related to electric power, and how do you use such equations. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the meaning of electric power. I've left a link to the video in the description section of this one if you need to review it. Electric power refers to the rate at which work is done by the battery upon the charge that moves through it, or the rate at which energy is delivered to the load, that is to the light bulb or the heater or the motor. We can easily derive an equation for electric power from the mathematical definitions of power, electric potential difference, and current as shown here. I'm going to begin by taking this middle equation and writing an expression for delta E. That is delta E equal delta V times Q. And I'm going to take this expression for delta E and substitute it into the numerator of the first equation. When I do, that first equation becomes P equal delta V times Q all over T. Now I notice in this equation that there's a Q divided by a T. Q divided by T is simply current. So I'm going to take I, the current, and substitute it in for delta for Q over T into that first equation. The first equation becomes P equal delta V times I. This is the first of three equations that we'll be deriving in this video. The other two equations can be derived using this equation and the so-called Ohm's Law equation. The equation you see on the top left is the equation I just derived for electric power. The middle equation, delta V equal I times R, is the so-called Ohm's Law equation. It's the big equation in electric circuits. And the third equation is simply a rearrangement of the, of the second equation. I'm going to use these three equations to derive two more electric power equations. In my first derivation, I'm going to look at the middle equation and notice that delta V is equal to IR. So I'm going to take I times R and substitute it into the first equation for delta V. That first equation then becomes P equal I times R multiplied by I, which simplifies to P equal I squared times R. In my second derivation, I'm going to look at the third equation and notice that delta V divided by R, well, that's equal to I. So I'm going to take delta V divided by R and substitute it into the first equation for I. When I do, that first equation becomes P equal delta V times delta V over R, which simplifies to P equal delta V squared divided by R. I now have two more equations for electric power, thus giving me three equations for electric power. Let's learn how to use them. Here are our three equations for electric power. They're numbered for discussion purposes. A common physics word problem will ask you to solve for the electric power from given values of the electric potential difference, delta V, the current, I, or the resistance, R. The big question is, which one of these three equations should we use? And the answer is, it depends on what's given in that physics word problem. For instance, if you're given the values of both delta V and I, then the equation one would be the equation you'd want to use to calculate power. But if you don't know both delta V and I, but maybe you know I and R, then you're not going to be using equation one. If you know both I and R, you'd use equation two to solve for the power. That's a perfect equation for solving for power. If you don't know both delta V and I, or both I and R, but maybe what you do know is delta V and R, then you're not going to be using equation one or equation two. Instead, if you know delta V and R, you're going to be using equation three to solve for the power. Perhaps the most difficult part of such physics word problems is knowing which power you're solving for. Are you solving for the rate at which work is done upon the charge by the battery, or are you solving for the rate at which energy is delivered to the bulb? And if there's more than one bulb, is it bulb A or bulb B? If you need to determine the power of bulb A, then you would take the current in bulb A and multiply it by the resistance of bulb A. Don't multiply by the total resistance, and don't multiply by the resistance of bulb B, unless, of course, you're trying to determine determine the power in bulb B, then you take the current in bulb B multiplied by the resistance of bulb B. You'll note in these two equations that the I is not the I of A or the I of B because the current is the same in both of these light bulbs. 
Physics is not a math course. It's a course that uses math, but it's not a math course. So you must always be careful when you do a math problem in physics to not divorce the physics concept from the math problem. Classic instance where you might be tempted to do that would be solving a problem like this one. Compare the current flow in two bulbs, a 60 watt bulb and a 120 watt bulb, when those two bulbs are placed in their own household circuit. The wrong path through this problem goes something like this, to say P equal I squared times R. So the I squared of the 120 watt bulb must be two times bigger than the I squared of the 60 watt bulb. Therefore, the I of the 120 watt bulb must be the square root of two bigger than the I of the 60 watt bulb. No, 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 no. That's not the way to do it. So what's wrong with that path is it presumes that the resistance of the 120 watt bulb is the same as the, the, the resistance of the 60 watt bulb, and it isn't. A better way to go about approaching this problem is to use this equation, P equal delta V over uh, delta V times I, because both the 60 watt and the 120 watt bulb are plugged into the same outlet, so the delta V is the same for each of them. If the outlet is a US outlet, that delta V value is around 120. 20 volts. So I'm going to actually solve this problem mathematically using this equation here. I'm going to put 60 watts in for P and 120 volts in for delta V and solve for I and it comes out to be 0.5 amps for the 60 watt bulb. If I repeat the process for the 120 watt bulb, putting 120 putting the 120 watts in for the P and the 120 volts in for the delta V, the I comes out to be 1.0 amps. So the conclusion to this question would be that the point that the 60 watt bulb draws one half the current as the 120 watt bulb. Now I'd like to look a little deeper at the 60 watt and 120 watt bulb. And what I currently know is I know the delta V is 120 volts for each, assuming a US outlet. I know the current is 0.5 amps for the 60 watt and 1.0 amps for the 120 amps. And what I'd like to do is two things. First, calculate the resistance for each of the bulbs. Second, once I got the resistance known, I'm going to try to calculate the power of these two bulbs with two of the other equations we haven't used yet. So let's get the resistance first. I know that delta V equal IR. So for the 60 watt bulb, I'm going to go R equal delta V over I. That's 120 watts divided by 0.5 amps. And that comes out to be 240 ohms for the 60 watt bulb. If I repeat the process for the 120 watt bulb, I'm going to say R equal delta V divided by I equal 120 divided by 1 amp. And that comes out to be 100. 120 ohms. So the less powerful bulb, the 60 watt bulb, has twice as much resistance as the 120 watt bulb. Now what I know is I know delta V I and R for the two bulbs. And I want to, I've already used the equation P equal delta V times I to calculate currents. I want to use the other two equations, the bottom two equations, substituting in values of I and R and delta V to see what values I get for power. And I know what the answer should be. Let's see if the equations work. So for the 60 watt bulb, I'm going to use the P equal delta V squared divided by R equation first. So that would be 120 squared divided by 240. When you do the math on that, that comes out to be 60, 60 watts, just what we expected for a 60 watt bulb. Now I'm going to use the other equation, P equal I squared times R. So I'm going to plug in 0.5 and square it, that comes to 0.25 multiplied by the R of 240, 0.25 times 240 is 60 watts again, just as I expected for a 60 watt bulb. Now for the 120 watt bulb, I'm going to do the same thing beginning with delta V squared over R, that's 120 squared divided by 120, comes out to be 120 watts, just what I expected for a 120 watt bulb. And using the other equation, P equal I squared R, I'm going to go 1 squared multiplied by the 120, and that also is 120 watts. So my equation work. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comments section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission, always great practice, good workout with reading and thinking. Concept Builder just may be one of your best things to do right now. If you need to do more algebraic problem solving, try the calculator pad where you'll find problems, answers, and audio guided solutions. Finally, we have a tutorial page that you can read whenever you need to brush up on the topic. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.